Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and salam sejahtera to all of you. <coughs> okay, in our today lecture, we're going to start something new. So, as what we have been informed in the first week of uh, this semester, uh, this subject has been divided into three type of fields. Uh, the first type of field that we have discussed is known as electrostatic field and the second type of field is known as magnetostatic and now we are going to go to the third type uh, which is uh, known as electromagnetic field okay so as what been shown uh, from your course information uh, we are going to cover topic of week number 12 here Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to talk about electromagnetic field. Okay, so therefore, please, uh, so it's some, this is something totally new. So, but yet, it's still depending on what we have learned before in our uh, previous type of fields. Okay, so I'm going to uh, give the introduction of what is electromagnetic field. That's what we're going to talk first, introduction of electro magnetic field okay. electro magnetic field okay so the first thing that we must uh, need to know uh, in the world of electromagnetic so it contains two type of field okay so the first thing we must uh, be able to define it contains okay electric field okay i'm going to put the word n now in capital letter to instill is important magnetic field okay so the first thing that we must see the difference between electromagnetic and from other field that we learned before in this electromagnetic field it contains both field together which is which are electric field as well as magnetic field the second characteristic of the field is time dependent okay so therefore this is, should be the first thing we must uh, know about the characteristic of our electromagnetic field so from here what we can see for example so example i'm giving here so if i'm going to write the field here e so the e we know representing our standard electric field given as this equation it contains amplitude then it's contained this uh, parameter we're going to discuss later on Okay, cos omega t minus beta z. Okay, that's the way we're going to represent of our electric field. Therefore, the corresponding magnetic field H will be given as this term E naught over constant impedance exponential minus alpha z cos omega t minus beta z minus impedance angle one okay that's the way we represent the field in the world of electromagnetic field what we need to know if you have electric field at the same time you're going to have the corresponding magnetic field if you are given magnetic field at the same time you can find its corresponding electric field. That is the first thing that we must be able to, to see. The second thing, both field contains extra information that we haven't seen before, which is the time factor. Okay? For example, if we talk about electrostatic, okay, remember electrostatic? So if we refer back to the 
uh, okay, E due to infinite line charge. Okay, so we are saying that the E is equal to rho L over 2 pi epsilon R in R direction. And we haven't seen any T or time parameter in our electric field where in the world of electrostatic. Similarly, we refer to magnetostatic. Okay. So let's say we refer back to our solution H due to infinite surface current. So what is our H field that we obtained before? Is equal to J naught over 2 and normal to the to the surface current and still in this particular solution we have not seen any parameter time involved okay therefore we have to see now in electromagnetic field the first thing the e and h exist simultaneously and the second characteristic we must observe we need to consider time in our analysis okay that's why it's make it a bit complicated Okay, so how actually we generate electromagnetic field? That should be the next issue that we want to actually introduce, the source of electromagnetic field. Okay, so anyone can recall what uh, is the source for electrostatic field? For electrostatic field, the source, stationary charges, correct? Okay, that should be the source for electrostatic field. What is the source for magnetostatic field? The source for magnetostatic field, moving charge with constant speed. Okay, that should be the source for magnetostatic field. So for electromagnetic field, the source still charge, okay, so we're going to sit here, charge, okay, because charges still the basic foundation to generate all these fields. Moving, so now we're going to see is part of magnetostatic field source with varying speed. That should be the main characteristic of our source for electromagnetic field, the charge moving with changing speed. So in other words, if we refer to our standard equation of convection current density, where we define current density as J equal to rho VU, so the U in this case contain acceleration. So that should be the main difference between source for magnetostatic and source for electromagnetic field where source for electrostatic, the charge moving with constant speed, whereby the source for electromagnetic field, the charge moving with varying speed. So example that we can relate to this uh, scenario is alternating current. So that should be what we're going to conclude. So whenever you have a situation, if we plot I against T, when it have all these variations, so that's going to be the source for electromagnetic field. So whenever you have circuits contain alternating current, you're going to generate electromagnetic field. Whether you want it or you don't want it, it's going to be generated. Why? Because that should be the sources for electromagnetic field. In communication, yes, we want it to generate information. But in electronic world, no, we don't want it because this electromagnetic field is going to affect the neighboring circuit. We're going to call it as interference. So therefore, you can see now, that's what engineers have to tackle. Yeah? Because this field is going to be created whenever you have a situation whereby there is current that moving with 
varying speeds. Okay, so therefore, that should be the standard introduction of our electromagnetic field. So now, how are we going to discuss uh, our electromagnetic field in this particular syllabus? Okay, so remember before we talk about static field. Okay, that should be the thing we've seen before, static fields. And then, how many static fields that we have learned? There are two. They are electrostatic. And the second type, we call it to be what? Magnetostatic. Okay? So... That should be the one we learned before. Now we're going to talk about time varying field. Okay, and we call it to be electromagnetic. Okay, that should be the overview of what we're going to uh, talk about. So this is what we're going to learn starting from today's lecture. This is what we have learned before in from week number two up to the previous last week. So that should be the thing we have seen. So now how we integrate them together? How we able to link the concept that we have learned before so that those concepts still applicable in our future field discussions? Okay, so... In order to do that, we must go back to what we call it Maxwell equations. Okay, and how many type of Maxwell equation that we have learned? There are two types. So I'm going to focus on the point form. Okay, so now... So this is what we're going to create now. So this table. Okay. So I'm going to okay, put a barrier now, segregating the static field from the time varying field. So now we have, we're going to use Maxwell equations. Okay. So how many Maxwell equations in the world of electrostatic? There are two. And how many Maxwell equation in the world of magnetostatic? There are also two. Okay, therefore, this is going to be our table now to link the things that we have learned before to what we're going to learn in coming weeks. Okay, so the first Maxwell equation that we've seen is known as Gauss law in point form that is given as divergence of D equal to rho v okay we have talked about it we have solved problem and then second maxwell equation we define it to be the curl of e equal to zero because we are assuming in electrostatic field the electric field is conservative so therefore this equation is valid whereby in magnetostatic field we have seen from ampere circuit law the curl of H is equal to J. Then we have also proof that divergence of B is equal to zero. Okay, that's one. The conclusion of various concept related to static field based on what we state here, Maxwell equation in point form. So this actually the equation we're going to link between static field and time varying field. What I mean by that, now we are migrating in the world, into the world of magnetostatic, the first equation of Maxwell still valid. Alhamdulillah. So we don't have to talk about something new. Whatever we learned before in the world of static, to be specific here, Gauss law, still applicable in the world of electromagnetic field. However, for the second equation here, 
we have to alter it. So the curl of E is no more equal to zero. Now it's equal to negative D B over DT. Okay, so this equation is related to what is known as Faraday's law. So that should be the first topic that we're going to discuss under the category of electromagnetic field to do revision on Faraday's law because I presume most of you have learned about Faraday's law in your high school, uh, in your SPM, in your STPM, O levels, or even A levels. You have seen this law before being discussed, so we're going to just do revision. And we're going to make it a bit uh, simpler, hopefully. Okay, we're not going to memorize. We're going to use the equation to solve problem. Yeah? So that should be the first change needed from the point of view of Maxwell equation from static into time-varying scenario. And the second changing or changes that need to be focused on going to be this third equation, whereby now the curl of H is no more equal to J anymore. You need to add extra term here, DD over DT. And this phenomena is related to what we're going to define the third type of current in our syllabus. We call it to be displacement current density. So remember, in terms of current, we have defined the first current known as convection current density. The second type of current we have introduced was conduction current density and the third type of current that we must be able to differentiate known as displacement current density convection conduction and displacement okay that's going to be discussed later on as we continue uh, discussing about electromagnetic field and for the fourth maxwell equation luckily is remain as it is so no more changes so what we have learn we have discussed before for this equation still inshallah applicable in the world of electromagnetic field as a summary here uh, to talk about time varying field we're going to reuse maxwell equation but we need to readdress faraday's law as first lecture and then we're going to talk about displacement current density uh, for the second changes in the Maxwell equation. Apart from there, all these equations going to be as they are for the first one and the fourth one. Okay, so that should be our logical step. So now, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to go into the first objective. This is talking about Faraday's law. Okay, Faraday's law. So as I mentioned before, it's just revision to all of you. Nothing new. So because you have talked about this before. So in order to support our uh, discussion here, I'm going to go back to our textbook. Okay, this is our textbook. Hopefully most of you have... Uh, access to this textbook or you can also use other electromagnetic book but just focus on this particular uh, issue Faraday's law section 9.2 okay so based on this uh, uh, reference I'm going to focus on what is uh, stated in this gray box so Faraday state that Faraday discovered that induced EMF, which is in volts, in any closed circuit is equal to the time rate of change of the magnetic flux linkage by the circuit. Okay, that should be what we're going to focus on, that description. So, so now, so let's say you have a circuit. I'm going to 
redraw. I'm not going to write it. I'm just going to re-explain. So, so they have a closed circuit. So this is our closed circuits. It's a conductor. Okay. If there is a field, okay, let's say passing through these closed circuits. Okay, the field is B. So what's important here, the B must be changing with time. Okay, finally they said that if the field flux linkage, which is actually magnetic flux coming from the magnetic field density, okay, changing with time, rate of change, that's what I'm going to prove. So we're going to create what? Inside this circuit, our induced EMF. I'm going to call it to be VEMF. Okay, so therefore, that's what Faraday conclude from his experiment. Whenever the conductor being linked to any magnetic flux that changing with time, that condition will generate the induced EMF. Okay, so we have learned before in order to generate this field, we need, for example, a source. So let's draw a source here. So this is a source, a line conductor. And in this source, we're going to have current. Okay, and the current is important here, must be changing with time. That's what should be the standard uh, pattern of our electromagnetic field charge moving with varying speed. So I'm going to assume to be AC current. And from what we learned based on two laws before, either bio savart law or ampere circuit law, this particular current going to generate what is known as our standard magnetic field. Okay? So, because the current here changing with time, the field being produced also going to be changing with time. So as this field propagate to a region where there is a closed circuit, so that closed circuit will introduce what is known as induced EMF. Okay, so with that, we're going to conclude that the INDU EMF, V EMF, based on Faraday's, is going to be negative D flux linkage over DT. Okay, so I'm going to define what this symbol, this is known as flux linkage. And then we know that flux linkage actually is equal to number of turn multiplied with magnetic flux. Okay, so if you have number of turns here, so n turns, so that phenomena will be included in this equation and defined as flux linkage, and we can state that our magnetic flux based on what we have learned before is equal to b dot d s so therefore faraday state now v emf is equal to negative n d magnetic flux over d t okay that should be uh, the equation summarizes what is Faraday's law. Okay, so to make this learning process much easier, we're going to define specific type of Faraday's law. So the first type of Faraday's law that we're going to discuss is known as transformer EMF. Okay, the second type that we're going to discuss is known as motional EMF. And the last uh, type that we're going to introduce 
we're going to call it hybrid EMF. Okay, so therefore, that's going to be the next logical step discussing about Faraday's law. So first, transformer EMF, second, motional, and third, hybrid. So what it meant here, whenever you have to solve Faraday's law problem, we need to identify that problem, is this categorized as transformer or motional or hybrid because each type of EMF has its own equation that we can utilize. I'm going to show to you later on uh, what I mean by that. Eh? So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to continue talking about the first type here, which is known as transformer EMF. Okay, so what is transformer EMF? Very simple. So for transformer EMF, what we need to define that tau EMF, what you have to observe, the first thing that whatever you have given in the problem remains stationary. So I'm going to put circuits remains stationary, meaning that no movement on part of the circuits. Okay? So all the problem related to static problem. But yet, the field that you're going to deal with will be field changing with time. Okay, that's going to be what you're going to observe. Whenever you have a problem whereby the field of B is changing with time and the circuit are remain stationary, that scenario can be categorized as transformer EMF. So what we need to do whenever we dealt uh, with this type of transformer EMF, the Faraday's law that we want to use is going to be as such, negative M, integrate dB over dt dot d ds. Okay? So what we have to do first, we need to do this differentiation. That should be our first step, solving uh, transformer EMF. Once we have done that, then only we continue with this integration. Okay, that should be the steps needed to solve problem related to transformer EMF. Differentiate first, then only you integrate. So let's do problem now. So to show how uh, this type of EMF can be can be solved. Okay, I'm going to refer back to my textbook. Okay, so I'm going to see problems that available for us to solve together. Okay, so this is the problem that you can. There's a lot of problem that you can refer to, try to solve yourself. So uh, let's make it easy. We're going to solve problem 9.2. Eh? Problem 9.2. So in this problem 9.2, the circuit conducting loop, so this, uh, our conducting loop, lies in the xy plane. So you can say, or we can redefine it to be lies on the Z plane shown in figure 9.23. So this is the figure we referred to. The loop has a radius 0.2 meter. So the radius of this conductor loop is 0.2 meter. And the resistance is 4 ohms. Okay, if the B given here, the B is known as magnetic field density, 40 sine 10 to the power 40, and we can see T occur here in z direction milliweber per meter squared find the current so find the current so it's it's not asking us find the induced emf it's asking us to find the current eh? so it's going back to our circuit theory issues here okay, let's do this problem problem 9.9.2 Okay, so 
I'm going to redraw the problem now. What we have a conductor on the XY plane, and then on the conductor contain resistance R. Okay, so the radius R small. Okay, so now what's given here is given information of the the B and the B as what we have seen is changing with time okay so let's uh, define first we're going to uh, see B is changing with time yes and then the circuit remain stationary so therefore we can find the induced EMF and we define that induced EMF as transformer EMF. So this is what we define as transformer EMF problem. Okay. And then so for us to solve this problem, we know that VMF should be equal to an Alhamdulillah, in this problem, the number of turn is only equal to one turn, so we don't have to put n there. So we're going to define to be negative integration of db over dt dot with ds. That should be uh, our equation known as transformer EMF. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, so I'm going to first solve for what is my db over dt equal to? Okay, so this is equal to d over dt and the, the b given in this problem is forty sine 10 to the power of 4. Okay, 40 times 10 to power negative 3, remember, because milliweber, and then I'm going to have here sine 10 to power of 4, sine 10 to power of 40, okay, and then remember the direction of this uh, particular B, because it's a vector, Z directions, so that's what we have to, to differentiate, so what should be uh, the solution after the differentiation, so you're going to be 400. So I'm going to differentiate sine. You're going to become cos. Okay. And then other remain as they are. Yeah? So that should be the solution of differentiation. Yeah? So there you are. Very simple. Okay. Differentiate sine. We're going to have a cos. And then you differentiate the inside term of this sign going to give you 10 to the power 4 you multiply with 40 times 10 negative you're going to get 400 okay that should be the first uh, step needed to solve transformer emf so let's continue now i'm going to see my ds so remember the ds is the area uh, bounded by our conductor so this should be our ds Okay, based on our diagram, what should be the ds we need to substitute here? So, I think most of you are going to say to me, you just simply define as r dr dv in z directions. Eh? So, therefore, because we are using cylindrical coordinate, so therefore the ds defined here is known as r dr dv in z direction. And we can see the z dot with this z going to give us one eh? so therefore uh, that's what we're going to see it's going to be a not zero value it's going to be a value eh? because z dot z will give us one so let's continue now okay so i'm going to find my vmf okay simply equal to negative Okay, so double integration, one, two. Because I can see there's uh, R term and phi term, so R and phi. And then we're going to substitute 40, 
400 cos 10 to the power of 40 r d r d d phi okay so the r very simple from 0 into our radius given 0 0.2 meter and phi from 0 to 2 pi okay so when you do that you're going to have here negative a 400 times pi times 0 0.2 squared okay that should be the area and then cos uh, 10 to power of 4 t okay there you are so that should be the mathematics now the question asks for i so finally i as what we're going to see is equal to v emf divided with r okay so r given here is equal to 4 so we just substitute r with 4 and then you substitute the v with whatever we obtain up here so based on this solution what should be uh, the way we're going to define the current so that's why it's important it's, for us engineer uh, it's not the numerical value is uh, we, we cannot just leave the solution in terms of numerical value we need to define how the current actually propagate or flows in this circuit okay so when we define the b just now based on this formula the emf going to be defined as in this direction so the relationship between the vmf and the b will be based on this diagram how i'm going to use my thumb and then i'm going to show this so my four fingers going to define my vmf based on this equation but yet in this problem what we observe the vf is equal to negative so the solution that we obtain is negative to the definition that we define therefore the vmf that we obtain here actually in this direction the blue color so based on the solutions okay because what is negative to what we defined earlier so therefore the current flow must follow this particular pattern so the current defined in this problem must be flowing in these directions so when you define the current flow in this direction it's going to give you positive value okay but if you choose it to be in negative direction the current following the definition of the earlier equation so that's how you need to able to relate the numerical value to the actual way how the current flows in your circuit so that's engineer not mathematician we need to know that because why because the polarity of the voltage passing through this resistance is very important so when the current flow in this direction so the load voltage passing through this resistor going to be in this direction this is not emf voltage this is the load voltage okay so therefore this is the emf voltage this is the load voltage we call it v load yeah? how the actually is opposite to the way the current passing through to that load so that's what we have to to define so there you are okay so we have done that example hope you uh, can uh, do more example yourself so i'm going to stop my lecture uh, up to here inshallah in my next lecture i'm going to continue talking about the second type of uh, EMF known as motional EMF and in that video as well I'm going to end with the hybrid EMF so uh, please uh, do more example yourself regarding a transformer EMF based on example you can extract from our uh, textbook with that thank you very much Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh